Greetings and welcome to another British Guy Reacts video and in this video a British guy is reacting to six words I've picked up living in America's Midwest. This video is taken from the one, the only, the legend that is Lawrence Brown from Lost in the Pond. Links in the description as always for the original content creator. If you're new to the channel and you like reaction videos, don't forget to subscribe with the notification bell on because I am posting every day. And if you are a returning viewer, subscriber or member, bloody love you. Yes, that's right, not, not you you. Don't forget you can follow me on my other social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok or Twitter. Just search Mr. H. Mr. H. Who's Mr. H? Um, <laughs> Mr. H and friends. Now listen my jibber jabber and let's get on with the video. One of the days when I might in this context have said whoops a daisy because it's not the 1950s anymore. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to words, specifically words that I picked up after moving to America. But wait, let's rewind because I didn't move to the United States of America, I moved to another country and I've been lying to you this whole time. That other country is the Midwest of the United States of America. Oh, and I get it, Uncle Toby will be writing in the comments now, that's not a country. Country, it's a region but it has a population that's very similar to that of the United Kingdom and like most other nations on earth the Midwest has its own culture and this includes Midwestern people Midwestern food and lots of fields but as somebody with a degree in English language and linguistics and a general keen eye for these things, it also has its own language. And furthermore, as somebody who's now lived in the Midwest for over a hundred years, I myself have begun adopting some of those Midwesternisms. Don't believe me? Are you skeptical that 12 years is enough time to significantly alter my vocabulary? Well, if so, belt up, sit back, and let's take a look at six words that I've picked up while living in the Midwest. One of my absolute favourite things about summertime in the Midwest is that you could just be ambling along when you encounter a certain type of fly that flashes you. I don't mean that, it remains fully clothed. What I mean is, <laughs> it's a fly that lights up. Like, act actually lights up. This is a miracle. I've lived in Indiana and Chicago and they're everywhere to be seen. And the first time I saw one of those, I thought I'd casually moved into an Enid Blyton novel. Amazing, I thought at the time. Flies that glow in the dark to entertain humans. And then I found out they were doing it for themselves. It's a bloody mating call. I mean, imagine if humans did that. Forget, forget Tinder. Just stand on the opposite side of the road and flash three times for age and smoking preference. Anyway, you might be wondering where this is going. The flies in question are called fireflies. Except in the Midwest and the South, they have an alternative name, lightning bugs. And in case you're unfamiliar with them, lightning bugs are not some godlike creature that can take out murder hornets. Anyway, back to the point of this video, there is a good reason that I never used the term firefly or lightning bug when I lived in Britain. Because Britain doesn't have lightning bugs except at Hogwarts. Yep. Anybody who's been watching this channel for five years is now clinically insane. Uh. But such people will also know that I long since quit fizzy drinks. Fizzy drink, I hear Americans saying, what's a fizzy drink? That was not an American accent. Well, fizzy drink is what we largely call in Britain a carbonated beverage. And not only do Americans not call it that, they can't decide from region to region what they should call it instead. In the South, I learned that people might refer to any carbonated beverage, be it Sprite Coke. or Dr. Pepper, as Coke, which could be confusing for a host of increasingly severe reasons. In many parts of the US, they simply say soda, and in the Midwest, specifically the parts that I lived in, they say pop. And now I say pop because firstly, fizzy drinks is longer. And secondly, if I say fizzy drinks, Americans might think I'm referring to that propeller scene in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory where Grandpa Joe and Charlie get destroyed. <laughs> then again, it's unlikely because those were fizzy <laughs> lifting drinks and it was from an unreleased draft. Sometimes I think America might name its food products by asking its children, Jessica, what do you think we should name this bag of sweet and Chex mix? And she's a child, of course she's going to say something like puppy chow. And you're all like, well, no, we can't go with that. That's dog food. That, that would never sell. <laughs> 
And yeah, it does in the Midwest. In fact, poppy chow, which is how my wife introduced me to it and why it has stayed in my vocabulary, is sort of a colloquial term. The name on the bag is often Muddy Buddies. And Muddy Buddies sounds like a film I watched wow. in private when I was 15. <laughs> I've not heard of that. Not heard of any of these. Let me know in the comments below if you've heard of any of these. Also got Monkey Munch, Muddy Munch, Reindeer Chow, and worst of all, Doggy Bag. What's going on, America? Next you'll have fish candy from Scandinavia. <laughs> and just, that's already been done. And as with lightning bug, the Midwestern word puppy chow is new to my vocabulary because we just don't have that in England. Actually, come to that, Chex Mix is not such a big deal either, which probably accounts for why I often get it confused with Tex-Mex and text messaging. So as we've now seen with puppy chow, pop and lightning bug, Midwesterners really like their food and drink. Just realize that doesn't apply to lightning bugs unless you're my cousin Brandon from Nebraska. But it does apply to this word, pitchin, which is easy to remember because it rhymes with both kitchen and bitchin. And a pitchin is something they used to do in the workplace before 2020 happened. It's where every member of staff brings in a food dish of some kind and then people just grab what they want. The problem was I wasn't a very good cook. I got better over time. I had to get better over time. The first event, I brought napkins. And I've heard whispers this is the chief reason I was forced to go full time on YouTube. And it's not really my fault. I never did anything like a pitchin in Britain, which is why I'm new to both the concept and the word. Yeah, we didn't do anything like that. Over here, normally, if it's your birthday, uh, you normally bring in cakes. I don't know why we do that. It's like, well, you know, if it's my birthday, I've got, I've got to bring in cakes. It's like, well, it's my birthday. Surely someone should else bring in cakes for me. But no, over here, normally in the workplace, if it's your birthday, uh, you actually have to bring in cakes for everyone else. Fun fact. Of course, in terms of the latter, it's quite possible that many Americans are now discovering this word through this video. And that's because the word pitchin is mostly used in the states of Ohio and Indiana, hence why I picked it up from my Hoosier colleagues. And I've just realized that Hoosier, a person from Indiana, is a bonus entry. And if you're American and you're watching this and you're still confused as to what a pitchin is, here are some other names for it found around the country. Potluck, spread, faith supper, covered dish supper, Jacob's join, fellowship meal, and fuddle. And now I'm having a crazy dream in which everybody brings puppy chow. In other words, a muddy body fuddle. <laughs> a few weeks after moving into this apartment, the wife and I realized that there was one accessory in particular that we were lacking, a vacuum cleaner. So we got a new one and my cat, who's scared to death of vacuum cleaners, thought it absolutely sucked but my wife and I loved it for the same reason. But vacuum cleaner is just one of the words I've used in America to describe this device. I'm British, so at first, no matter the make or model, I refer to it as a Hoover. This presents a problem in America when you're referring to, say, a Dyson, because here, a Hoover is not a catch-all term to describe all vacuum cleaners. It's a brand. It's a brand of vacuum cleaner. Actually, it turns out it was in Britain. It just became genericized over time. By the early 1930s, the Hoover company was so big that Hoover basically ran America. <laughs> I know where he's going to go with this. From a business point of view, it's really clever to use your brand. It's a bit like Red Bull. A lot of people will just refer to the term Red Bull for like an energy drink. Really, really clever. But yes, Hoover is a brand over here. And um, yeah, I still kind of use that term, Hoover. I, I, <laughs> this is a really crazy saying, but I, I normally say to my wife, I'll just run around the flat and Hoover, you know, to see me like running around with this like Hoover, just running around, not hoovering up, just running around. But yeah, <laughs> back to the video. Actually, that was literally true. So I had to stop saying Hoover, which is a bit of a shame because I like to keep my words short. Vacuum cleaner wasn't going to cut it. Thankfully, my Indiana in-laws had an alternative, sweeper. And it's confusing, isn't it? Because it sounds like a broom. But yes, much to my yeah. confusion, in parts of the Midwest, they do refer to a vacuum cleaner as a sweeper. In fact, they refer to the act of vacuuming as sweeping. You've just got to hope that Mr. Miyagi doesn't pull this shit on Daniel LaRusso. <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny he is so funny absolutely hilarious but yeah when i heard about the sweeper you know it's yeah i just think of a broom brush and sweeping he covered this on another video and sweeper back in the 90s when we were referring to football or soccer uh, there used to be a sweeper defensive position where someone would actually always stand 
behind the defense and would be like a sweeper defender, but they don't use it anymore. But anyway, back to OPE. Hands down, the chief defining quality of a Midwesterner is this. They will quietly express surprise by saying the word OPE. So, scenario, Oop. you're at work, you're at a pitching, and you leave the room to go and get yourself a glass of water. As you turn left out of the door, you almost bump into a dashing uh. young British man who's carrying some cold fries that he's going to warm up in the microwave uh -huh. for everyone. That's where you say it, Oop, followed by the words, excuse me. And honestly, it's so adorable and so in line with British politeness norms that I was bound to pick it up myself. I mean, how can you not love it? It's a combination of O oh and oops. Gone are the days when I might in this context have said whoops a daisy because it's not the 1950s anymore. Instead, I say ope. I'm an opa. I used to be opeless. Now I'm opeful. And I'm super Midwest authentic with it too. To make sure that the other person definitely knows that I don't hate them for nearly bumping into me, I do this face and then go my merry way. That's it for this episode. Thank you for joining me today. And let me know if you are in the Midwest and if any of these words are known to you. Wow, what did you think of the video? Another great video by Lawrence Brown of Lost in the Pond. Links in the description. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like because it really, really helps me and the channel out. And let me know in the comments below, do you use these words in these terms? It was interesting about the British politeness. We're constantly, for some reason, saying sorry. In my formative years when I used to go out, if I stood at the bar and some drunk guy just comes past me and bumps into me, he, so he bumps into me, I say sorry. I'm like, oh, sorry. I'm not sure why we do that. We're, we're constantly saying sorry about everything. Unless we're talking about road rage and I automatically develop Tourette's. But other, than, <laughs> but other than driving, I tend to always say sorry. If someone bumps into me or if you're walking along a corridor and you're stood there and you sort of take a side step and they take the side step that way and then you go that way and then they go that way. I know we go, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Why are we always saying sorry? But it's just something that us Brits normally do. Not all, not all. I'm sure someone's gonna type and say not all Brits do that, but uh, a lot of us do. Just a reminder, I'm putting a link up here. Me and my friend, Zach from North Carolina did British and American words, really, really funny click the link, go check that out. Really, really good original content. Again, if you're new to the channel and you like reaction videos, don't forget to subscribe with the notification bell on because I am posting every day at 2 p.m. Eastern. And if you are a returning viewer, subscriber or member, bloody love you. Yes. And all that leads me to say is take care, God bless. See y'all in the next video.